We've heard a lot of talk about non-disclosures lately, from Harvey Weinstein to Stormy Daniels, and now we're learning local lawmakers are often subject to them, too. In the House alone, at least 33 people have signed these NDAs, as they're called, in exchange for severance packages since Speaker Robert DeLeo took over in 2009, a practice he has defended as, quote, part of doing business. But this past Thursday, Representative Diana DeZaglio took to the House floor to demand an end to that style of business. She told the story of when she was a legislative aide back in 2011, became the subject of House gossip after she and a representative were seen together in the House chamber during a late-night party. Although an investigation found no wrongdoing and nothing inappropriate, DeZaglio said the rumors, innuendo, name-calling, brazen propositions continued until her boss told her she should look for a new job. She said she was offered a severance package, but only under the condition that she sign a non-disclosure and non-disparagement agreement to get the money, which she did. But on Thursday, she broke that agreement. Representative Diana DeZaglio of Methuen joins me now. Good to meet you. Thanks for being here. And by the way, we invited Speaker DeLeo and have not gotten a response beyond a statement, which we'll get to in a minute. Again, thank you so much for being here. Speaking of the Speaker, here is a piece of a statement that he put out the other day. Members of my staff and council's office met with Representative DeZaglio three times in June of 11 as part of the investigation into the incident, and none of these meetings did the representative report she was experiencing harassment. What's your response to that? Uh, that is actually true, and uh, as I've said multiple times, the harassment was a result of the gossip that had started during the time of the investigation, that the investigation had been completed, and that the gossip and other things that you had mentioned uh, eventually actually led to my being terminated. So when did you mention to the, anybody in the Speaker's office that you had been harassed? I had mentioned it to the Speaker's office upon finding out that I was being asked to leave my job uh, by, by my another former, state representative. By another state representative and had uh, told them about why I was being asked to leave my job. The Speaker's office deemed it to be wrongful termination. Uh, and did agree to give me a severance, but asked me to sign that non-disclosure. When you heard him say the other day, I never heard any of this, I think till he said he read it in the Boston Globe, what was your reaction? I can't speak to the speaker's memory of the past, but I can tell you that my memory is crystal clear. Uh, I can tell you that they did say in their statement recently and back then that they deemed the termination to be wrongful. And he doesn't quarrel with it. In fact, he even says, we believe that she was harassed. He just says, we didn't know anything about it until this story by Yvonne Abraham in the Globe. You said on the House floor on Thursday, uh, it may be a difference of remembrance. Do you think it's that? Or do you think the speaker is intentionally not telling the truth about what he knew? I can't tell you about what the speaker's thinking or not thinking, Jim. But what I can tell you is that I was one of 33 employees in the last nine years to be asked to sign a non-disclosure agreement in order to obtain my severance package, and people are fired all the time at the State House. He said none of those have anything to do with sexual harassment. Do you buy that? I'm concerned that some may, and I hope that that issue will continue to be investigated. How hard was this period for you? His name was Adams. Is that not the name of the representative Correct. who uh, fired you? How hard was that period of time after that moment on the uh, House floor? at night, where again, an investigation determined nothing inappropriate, nothing wrong on the part of the representative Kuzak, his name is, nor you. How hard was that period for you when you were the subject of gossip and all these other things I mentioned ago? You were what, 27, 28 years old? I was 26 and... Um, what was that like? Obviously it was tough and I've said that, but I'm not here to talk about the past, Jim. I'm here to talk about the future and what we were able to accomplish on the House floor the other day by passing a comprehensive bill to address sexual harassment. I promise you we'll get to that in one more second. Any of the people who subjected you to harassment or gossip still in the House today, whatever it is, seven years later? I believe so, yes. Are any of them elected officials? Yes. Why, do you want to name them? I didn't come forward to accuse or attack no, anybody. I, I came forward to make sure that the policies change so that other people don't have to experience. So do you want to name them? I came forward to talk okay. about Let, let's the talk bill that we're passing today, not to attack or accuse anyone. Okay, my understanding is your amendment, and I watched your floor speech the other day, is you wanted uh, non-disclosure agreements banned outright going forward. Is that not correct? Yes. Were you happy with the compromise that was reached, which did not include that outright ban? Were you content with what the 
House of Representatives did pass? I think that we did a really great job of making sure that a process was implemented because one didn't exist before, which is probably why, uh, you know, the speakers made comments about not, you know, remembering mm -hmm. that uh, that situation had occurred with me. There was no process in place back then. So if somebody came forward to say that they were experiencing harassment, there was no protocol to follow. People didn't know what to do. So what's the and answer? You are content with what ended up I'm very passing? happy. I think that we have one of the strongest uh, sexual harassment policies in the nation now due to uh, everybody coming forward and talking about these issues. But, but one, uh, you were looking for an outright ban. My understanding is the rules that were adopted said that in sexual harassment situations going forward, only if the claimant, the victim, for the survivor, whatever you want, agrees to there being a confidentiality clause, uh, uh, a non-disclosure clause, will there be one? Isn't that a good thing rather than your proposal? Because as we read in the Stan Rosenberg estranged husband situation, a lot of the victims, several of them, were unwilling to come forward until they were guaranteed that the Senate inquiry would guarantee their, their confidentiality. So isn't what the House did in some ways better than what you proposed, Representative? We actually have had a very lengthy discussion on this, and it's my position that while we did, what we did was very good and is going to be very helpful to victims to potential victims in the House of Representatives, just give me a minute, sure. that we need to find a better way to make sure that the confidentiality of the victim is protected without allowing public tax dollars to be used to protect not only the reputation of politicians and their staffers mm -hmm. who might be conducting or involved in these inappropriate behaviors. And I think that that was the point that we we're able mm -hmm. to get across, and we still need to continue to address moving forward. We only have 30 seconds. How isolated do you feel? Only five Democrats join you in your amendment. I think two other women. Have you been, how have you been treated, let me put it another way, since you stood up to the speaker, which is almost unheard of, last Thursday on the House floor? How I've been treated is not important. What's important is how we have been able to make a difference and how sharing my experience has been able to impact this policy moving forward, and I'm happy to see that it has. Do you want the Attorney General to be involved? If she chooses to investigate, then that is up to her. If she chooses to investigate, I would encourage her to do so. I'm a state rep. I did my duty. I came forward and shared my experience to try to help. I was able to do so, and we were able to move some policy forward, and I'm very happy about that. I can tell you, our representative, it's good to meet you. Thank Thanks you, so much for your time. I appreciate it.